Bloods here, yeah. Fraction. Yeah, that's right. I love this one. Yeah. Yeah. Mosh patch. Uh -huh. When you get up in here, you can see, even though it looks green right now, with the angled water, look how clear it is. Yeah. It's still clear. Mm -hmm. And then the lake's more perfect. Now I can envision swimming today. Places like this, yeah. I really <laughs> like to seek ahead, out. And, and the fall I'm colors are rich I'm around the lake. Oh, really beautiful. narrow. As soon as we got like moving, I got to do a fall too. I don't think I have done one. Wait a minute. And when is that? Oh, when is that coming up? So our so color here in the gorgeous peaks at this now? elevation no. around the end of October and the yeah, first of November. So there's a, and you know it's no, spread right there. So it's every yeah, day. Right, right. Okay. Sun's in my eyes and I can't see. It's right there. There it is. There it is. So, Patrick, there's something that goes on on this shore that you may be aware of. It's the western shore of this arm of the lake from about the castle back into here. The Oconee belts don't hang like a bell. They, they come up and, and look at you. Yeah. Really? And look at you. And, and it makes a photographer's dream because they're not oh, that that digging in the mud to get a picture yep. of them. We'll have to lay down on the ground. Yeah. 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 So, but, so, why do they do uh, that? What do you, what do you, what would you think of that, Patrick? Well, we'd see it like up in North Carolina. The only spot in North Carolina where they grow that do the same thing, mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's probably oh, just yeah. what most of these populations of Coney Bells are all one genetic individual. So it could have been the founder had had flowers like that, and it's just oh. a founder of that. So I think I heard you said earlier they spread rhizomally. Yeah, they they mostly spread by breaking piece breaks off and and flows down a little creek, which is why we mostly find them on creek banks, you know, on the edges of water. But um, they spread to little rhizomes. It's actually a little shrub. It's not a herb at all. It's a shrub. It, you know, it's it's uh, semi-woody at the base, so we call it a sub-shrub or sub -recessant. And um, you guys know the story of the Coney Bells? Okay, it was found by a man who didn't name it, named for a man who never saw it by a man who couldn't find it. Absolutely related to Galax, and actually the scientific name of the Coney Bell is Shortia gallicifolia, which means oh. Galax leaved shorts plant. So uh, the plant was found for the first time, encountered for the first time in June of 1787, right there by the Jacassi Dam by uh, this French gentleman named Andre Michaud. It was um, actually selected to be on the Lewis and Clark expedition, but uh, got turned back at St. Louis because they thought he was a French spy. <laughs> um, and Andre Michaud named a huge number of plants, discovered and named a huge number of plants from North America, not just the Appalachians. He went everywhere from Hudson Bay, Canada, to Florida, to uh, Missouri, and, and Illinois, and Indiana. So he was all over the place. Um, but he spent an, most of his time here. He was based out of Charleston. South Carolina and did all of his explorations out of the Charleston base and uh, had a garden there. Of course, he was sent here to find wood products to take back to Europe because the wood had all been cut down in Europe and France and, um, and England had lost the majority of their colonies where they were exploiting timber from and so now they had to pay Americans for wood and they didn't like that. Um, so <laughs> he was here for that but also to find plants to grace the, the estates of the, the French uh, people. And um, he found this little plant, and among all the things he found, he was here in June, so it blooms in March, and he, he only collected it with a little seed on it, a little seed pot, and a little capsule, and uh, the leaves, and he just said, encountered a small shrub. That's all he ever said about it in his journal, in, in Kiwi, the town of Kiwi, which is right at the dam where the, the confluence of rivers are. And um, the plant set in his collection over in Europe uh, until 1830, because he died in 1802. He was, uh, he, when he got shipped out of the United States for being a spy or not being a spy, we don't know which he really was, but he went to Madagascar, of all places. You know, it was a real adventure. He went to Madagascar and he caught uh, fever and died. And his son, Francois, I'm doing the show, published his book, The Flora of North America, Flora Boreale Americana, and uh, a year later, uh, posthumously, in compiling all the the plants and descriptions that he had, uh, had made over the years. And so <laughs> he never named this plant. Huh. He never in, he didn't include it in his flora, but it sat in his collection over in, in uh, Jardin de Plant in Paris for all those years. And in 1830, the most famous American botanist, the father of American botany, a guy named by the name of uh, Asa Gray, whenever he found 
um, maybe show specimen. And he's like, oh my gosh, this isn't just a new species, it's a whole new genus of plants. You know, it's, it looks like Galax is definitely the Diapentheaceae, which is a family that this plant belongs to, but a uh, whole new genus. So he finally described it in 1839 as Shortia gallicifolia. He named it after his friend Charles Short, who was a Kentucky botanist. And um, then uh, he looked at the note that Andre Michaud left on his label, and all it said down here, the only thing associated with the plant was in Hubmancon, Carolina, in the high mountains of Carolina. So Michaud knew, or Asa Gray knew, that Andre Michaud had climbed to the top of Linville Peak in Grandfather Mountain and planted the French flag and sung the French national anthem and declared it the tallest peak in all of North America. Right? It wasn't even the tallest peak in North Carolina, but it, <laughs> if, you've ever been, if you've ever been to the top of Mount Mitchell and look out, you can't tell how high you are, but when you're up on a big rock like you are at Grandfather Mountain, it looks like you're pretty high because you're on the edge of the scarf. You see a lot down a lot farther. Of course, you didn't have a barometric uh, way to measure the altitude either then, so uh, he was guessing. But... Um, he also knew that he'd been to Roan Mountain, which um, Andre Michaud would call Yellow Mountain. And so Asa Gray spent the rest of his life coming down south and going up to Roan Mountain, and going up to Grandfather Mountain, going up to Mount Mitchell, going all over the mountains of North Carolina where the high mountains of Carolina are. <laughs> it was the very first trip that Andre Michaud made out of Charleston. The very first mountains he saw were the same mountains we were just looking at. And when he saw them, he was like, these are the high mountains of Carolina, right? So these high mountains weren't really the highest mountains, they just happened to be high mountains. And the, the story ends, uh, Charles Short died before he ever saw the plant. Andre Mich uh, Asa Gray um, got to see the plants here in South Carolina and in North Carolina before he died. But he spent his whole life looking for them and everybody thought he was a nut because nobody could find this plant. And we found four more species in Asia and hadn't found one in North America. So they thought, well, probably Michelle collected this while he was in Asia or, or somebody gave it to him and mislabeled it. So really people were laughing at the greatest botanist in North America. And so there was a reward of $100 for anyone who could find it. Can you imagine that? We're talking about <laughs> Civil War times. So a little bit before Civil War times. $100 if you found this plant. Well, finally, the great, greatest part of the story to me is a 17-year-old boy named George Hyams was out behind his um, uh, fish fish hatchery, right behind his, his dad's place up in uh, Marion, North Carolina, on a place called Tom's Creek. And he found the Coney Bells, sent it to the University of North Carolina, and, and Dr. Ash immediately knew what it was, and sent it up to uh, Harvard, and where Gray was, and says, yep, yeah, you've refound a Coney Bell. At the time, William Woodard Ash proposed the name Hyam Sparkleberry for it instead of the Coney Bells. So it got the name of Coney Bells at a later time. But um, not, too, not too many years later, just a couple years later, uh, Charles Sprague Sargent was um, uh, surveying these uh, gorges, and he encountered huge amounts of cunning bells. So still to this day, the population, natural populations of cunning bells are found only around Lake Jocassi and the north end of Lake Kiwi, and then one spot up on Tom's Creek in North Carolina yeah. in the very upper northern end of the southern Blue Ridge Escarpment, mm -hmm. right? So all populations on the Southern Blue Ridge Escarpment, but the North Carolina population is as small as the population in this one coast. It's just mm -hmm. a very oh odd little disjunct mm. site. Yep. And that's the Coney Bells. It's a story. Mm -hmm. So found by a man who didn't name it, named for a man who never saw it, by a man who couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, the, it is the harbinger of spring when it blooms it is. here it's in the It is. It's one of the first the things to bloom in the forest, and it, if not the first, and uh, this really beautiful little white flowers that some populations come out pink others are white and fade pink yeah. and some are white yeah. and just fade white yeah. and there's a lot of variety in what you see and we always know up in here to really start watching for it when they start blooming the botanical gardens which precedes mm -hmm. the, the bloom here by a week or two yep and every year getting earlier and earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last year January 1st our Arcona Bells were wow. Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. what's this one with that oh believe it or not that's oh, a right really cool us, tree. Look at that. Oh oh that no that's a dogwood. Yeah, I thought it was a mountain holly. There's a there's a holly we have up here it has red berries like that and deciduous. Most yeah. of our hollies are actually deciduous. People only know the one. It's not. But, but that's a that's a dogwood. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the leaves just look a little funny on this.